look at our country's history. Um, so the title of our unit is Our Country Long Ago. So just like we do each week with Journeys, um, we do it each week with Journeys, but with our new social studies unit, we're going to spend some time learning first about the vocabulary that we're going to be seeing through for these next few weeks in our social studies. Um, so we're going to take a look at our vocabulary so we have an idea of what those words mean. So our first word is shelter. I say it, you say it, shelter. shelter. I say it, you say it, shelter. shelter. Let's clap the syllables in shelter. Shelter. How many syllables in shelter? Two syllables in shelter. Raise your hand if you've heard the word shelter before. Keep your hand up if you can tell me what the word shelter means. Abram, what do you think the word shelter means? It's like a house. Okay, it could be like a house. Okay, what else could we maybe add to that meaning? Sophia? I didn't hear you, honey. Somewhere to stay. Okay, so those are all good examples of what a shelter is. So a shelter is a place where people live and stay safe. Okay, so a shelter um, could be a place where people live, but it's also a place where people stay safe. So for example, you might have a, what is called a tornado shelter. Okay, and that is a place where you would go in the event of a tornado. Your masks need to be on over your noses and mouths, please. Your masks need to be on over your noses and mouths, please. Okay, so we have to make sure that, yes, we had part of that definition correct, but what we have to make sure of is that we also include that it, it keeps you safe. Okay, so it's a place where people live and it keeps them safe. So if you take a look at these photographs that I have up here, these are the different types of shelters that we'll be learning about in the social studies unit. Do these look like the shelters that we see today? No, these don't look like the shelters that we see today because we're going to be learning about the history of our country. I say it, you say it, shelter. Yeah. Our next word is tradition. I say it, you say it, tradition. tradition. Let's clap the syllables in tradition. Tradition. How many syllables in tradition, Logan? Three. Three syllables in tradition. Raise your hand if you've heard the word tradition before. Keep your hand up if you can tell me what the word tradition means. What do you think, Faden? Like this week or next week, um, it's going to be Thanksgiving when we celebrate. Okay, very similar, yeah, because usually we have a lot of traditions around holiday time. Okay? Um, like every, like Christmas every year, you do something with yes. your family. Exactly, you do the same thing every year. A tradition is something that you do the same every year. So for example, um, one of my family's Christmas traditions, we've done it for as long as I can remember. We go to church on Christmas Eve with my grandparents at their church. And then we go to my grandparents' house and we have dinner. And I, every year, we have the same thing for dinner. We always have soup for dinner. We always have potato soup and oyster soup. We always have those two soups every year. Okay, and then after that, now that my children, now that my brothers and I are older and we all have children ourselves, we open presents at my grandparents' house on Christmas Eve. And then on Christmas morning, they, we go to my mom's house and my grandparents come over with breakfast. They're going to bring the same thing for breakfast. They bring the same thing for breakfast every year. And then we spend time together on Christmas Day. So it's something that we do every year and we do it the same every year with the exception of probably this year because this year everything's a little bit different so a tradition is something that is done a certain way for many years and i put a picture of the church of a church up here because the church has a lot of traditions the things that we do at mass every week or people that go to mass every day the things that we do at mass our tradition. Part of going to Mass, everything that is done at Mass is a tradition. Okay? And then I have some fireworks up there for 4th of July. Most oftentimes people go and watch fireworks on the 4th of July. And then I have a Thanksgiving feast up there because most oftentimes at Thanksgiving people spend time with their families and have a feast. I say you say it tradition. 
I say it, you say it, tradition. tradition. My next word is explorer. I say it, you say it, explorer. explorer. Let's pop the syllables in explorer. Explorer. How many syllables in explorer? Abram. Three. Three syllables in explorer. What's my root word or base word of explorer? Logan? Explore. Explore. Okay? So raise your hand if you've heard the word explorer before. What is an explorer? Somebody who goes and looks at stuff. What else can we add to that? Abram? It's like somebody goes to, um, like if they um, learn about the certain place, they want to go there and they um, learn more about they it. They want to learn more about it. Maybe it's somewhere new that they've never been. Okay? So an explorer is a person who travels to a place, to a new place, to learn about it. Okay, so oftentimes, the, the, the long ago, kings and queens would send people, they would pay them to go and explore a new land. Will you please put your mask on? And will you please put your mask on? Will you please put your mask on? Okay, so I have a couple different explorers up here. The two here that on the left are Lewis and Clark. We're going to spend some time learning about Lewis and Clark and why they are important in this unit. The other person that I have up there is Christopher Columbus. And then, because we are learning about history, one of the ways that they would get to these new places would be by ship, okay? Because they didn't have airplanes. So I have a model of a ship here that they may have gone to explore that new place on. Can I get your question in just a bit? Okay, I say, you say it, explorer. Explorer. My next word is colony. I say, you say it, colony. Now, this is a tricky one. Let's pop the syllables in colony. Colony. How many syllables here are in colony? Three syllables in colony. Now, some of you probably have no idea what this word means, but raise your hand if you've heard the word colony before. Keep your hand up if you can tell me what the word colony means. Elena, do you want to take a guess? Yeah, I've heard about the colony Did you say a colony of ants? Of bees. Of bees. Okay, that would be like a group. Kind of. So a colony, when we're talking about a colony, we're talking about a place that is settled or started by people from another country. Okay, so a colony is a place that is settled by people from another country. So it's kind of hard to, you, if, if I, I wouldn't tell you this, you wouldn't know if I didn't tell you this, but this is like a map of the United States, but they've zoomed in on that eastern part of the United States, the east coast of the United States. And you'll see that there are 13 states, though they're now states, but 13 places that are now states that started out as those first 13 original colonies. Because we're going to learn how those colonies were settled in this unit. Okay, so people would come from other countries over into what is now the United States. And this would have been the first piece of land that they would have seen after they crossed the Atlantic Ocean. Okay, because the Atlantic Ocean is over here on that eastern part of the United States. So what is now the United States is that first piece of land that they would have seen. So they stopped and they established colonies. Okay, it's a place that is started or settled by people that aren't from this original country. They're from another country. I say you say it, colony. Colony. Now, my next word is colonist. Now that you know what a colony is, you might be able to identify what a colonist is. So let's clap the syllable, or I say, you say it, colonist. Colonist. Let's clap the syllables in colonist. Colonist. How many syllables in colonist, Dylan? Three. So now that I've told you what the word colony means, what do you think a colonist is? Logan? Like the same thing like the animals. Kind of. Melina? A person who lives in the colony, right? So a colony is a place that's settled by a group of people from another country 
but we call a person who lives in that colony a colonist. So the person who lives in the colony is called a colonist. I say it, you say it, colonist. I say it, you say it, colonist. Colonist. So you'll notice I have, whoops, you'll notice I have some pictures of some colonists here, not very many. Okay, our next word is independence. I say it, you say it, independence. independence. Let's slap the syllables in independence. Independence. How many syllables, Eli, in independence? Independence. Four syllables in the word independence. Raise your hand if you've heard the word independence before. Keep your hand up if you can tell me what the word independence means. What do you think, Marina? Okay, you might be considered brave if you're independent. Sophia, what might you want to add to that? Like you're alone or by yourself, right? So when, when you do something, now it's kind of, we don't do it in second grade this year just because of everything going on, but in years past, I've had something called independent reading. If you're reading independently, who are you reading with? Partner. Yourself, right? You're reading by yourself. So independence simply means that you're free from other people or places, okay? You're free from other people or places. So you'll notice I have a picture of the American flag up there for a reason. We're going to find out why the American flag is a symbol of our independence. We're going to find out why in this unit, why we celebrate the 4th of July. Okay, yes, it's a fun holiday where you get to go and spend a lot of time outside and have picnics and go to parades and watch fireworks, but there's a reason that we celebrate that holiday. And another name for that holiday, some people call it 4th of July, but some people call it Independence Day. And we're going to find out why we call it Independence Day in this unit. I'll say it, you'll say it, Independence. Independence. And our last word, I believe, is pioneer. I say it, you say it, pioneer. Pioneer. Let's clap the syllables in pioneer. Pioneer. How many syllables in pioneer? Daniela? Three. Raise your hand if you've heard the word pioneer before. Keep your hand up if you can tell me what the word pioneer means. And that's okay that we don't know. That's okay. Okay, so a pioneer is someone who goes first and prepares the way for the other people to come after, okay? So a pioneer is a person who goes first and they're getting the way ready for the other people to follow and come. So we're going to learn about how we had those first 13 original colonies and what is now the United States and how eventually people wanted to venture out and travel westward. And we're going to find out what they did and how they got there in order to get to the western part of the United States and help establish more states. Okay, pioneers often travel, traveled in covered wagons. I say it, you say it, pioneer. pioneer. Okay, so what we're going to do today, and I think what I'm going to do, I think I am going to make this one of your centers. I think I am going to make this one of your centers. What you're going to do is you're going to get a piece of paper that looks like this. It's got our seven words on it. We'll talk about which word is which. But then what I'm going to do is I am going to share this with you. I'm going to share our vocabulary slides with you on Google Classroom like I have done before. If you remember, I did that with our science vocabulary when you had to write the definitions. But what you're going to do in this paper you are not writing anything on this paper. On this paper, you're going to draw a picture to help you remember what the word means. So you're going to draw a picture to help you remember what each of these words mean. And like I said, I'm going to share this with you on Google Classroom so that you can use and see those, some of those pictures that I have included a little bit more up close. After you have done that, you are going to cut these out um, can I see your black notebook for a second? And you're going to glue them in your black notebook. Now remember, when our black notebook looks like this, it's social studies when we flip it over at science. We're in social studies right now, so you're going to open. You're going to find your next clean page in your social studies side. And after you have drawn your pictures, you're going to cut them out, and you're going to glue them in your notebook. They should all fit on one page. They should. 
Um, if they don't, you can put them onto another page if you need to. Okay, but this is going to be one of your centers, so not everybody is going to be working on this right away. Some of you are going to be working on other things, but everybody will have the opportunity to work 